heat exchanger is a device that helps in transfer of thermal energy from one fluid to another fluid. On a daily basis, we use at least five to six devices that actually have a heat exchanger in them. The easy one is your fridge. Your fridge contains a heat exchanger, which takes the heat inside the fridge and transfers it to a refrigerant like R134A. Since heat is being removed from air, its temperature drops. A similar heat exchanger exists in a room that has an air conditioner or AC in it. As we are thinking about these devices, we might get a question. If the refrigerant temperature gets really low, why can't we use it to cool the food, right? Why do we first have to cool the air, which is then used to uh, cool the food? It seems very inefficient. But the answer is quite simple. You don't want to expose your food to a dangerous chemical like R134A. That is why R134A is used to cool the air first, and then your food is being cooled by the chilled air. In areas with severe winters, natural gas or propane-based heaters are used. The idea is quite simple. You burn fuel, the chemical reaction releases heat. You can then use the seat to warm yourself, right? But that is not going to work because when you burn hydrocarbon-based fuels like propane, the products include dangerous gases like carbon dioxide or sometimes even carbon monoxide. And that is why we need a heat exchanger to transfer the thermal energy from combustion to a safe fluid like water. You could then run this hot water throughout your apartment or house to heat it up. To summarize, heat exchangers are thermal devices and they need two fluids which exchange thermal energy with each other. This goes without saying, but one of these fluids should be rich in thermal energy. This is usually described by a term called capacitance. We have a different video for that. I will drop a link below that once the video is out. Secondly, there needs to be a system which helps in this transfer of energy. This system is what engineers build and call heat exchanger. There are so many types of heat exchangers. The primary classification includes parallel flow and counter flow. In parallel flow heat exchangers, both the fluids flow in the same direction and in counterflow heat exchanges, the fluid flows in opposite direction. Now, how do we know which heat exchanger is best? Well, from a pure thermodynamic standpoint, you can rate heat exchangers based on two parameters, the log mean temperature difference and the effectiveness net transfer units. However, for real life installations, a cost model is developed to see the return on investment on these exchangers. Efficient heat exchangers are really costly, but they save money over a longer time. Now, if you're a business owner, your decision is most likely going to be driven by the cost model and not by LMTD or uh, effectiveness NTU. All right, I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.